everybody, and welcome back to another The Duck Descent into Horror podcast. As always, I am one of your hosts. I am Amanda from AGP, and with me is... Me, as usual. Feel the Hatred from Feel the Hatred. Mm. That works. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so... Phil and I have been playing this game called Phasmophobia, and they had an update where they brought in these cursed objects. And so I had the idea, like, hey, let's look at some actual cursed objects that are in this world, whether they're haunted or they curse you if you take something. And there was quite a few, but I think I picked some. Some are well known. Some people may not know as well. But they all have some. They all have an interesting history, and some one got turned into a movie franchise. Mm. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> well, she exists. She was she was in an episode of Ghost Adventure, so it has to be true. But what I think it is, she was in a movie and then got its own spinoff. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Well. Annabelle. Yeah, that'd be it. It was in The Conjuring 2. She's... Pretty sure. Look, that doll, that doll... Look, the doll that they created for that is absolutely creepy and terrifying. Mm -hmm. At least the original doll looks innocent, which plays more into the whole storyline of what supposedly happened with this doll. I was going to say, yeah, when I saw the image, I was thinking of um, Raggedy Ann. <laughs> well, that's, well, yeah, that's because that's what she is. A long time. Yeah, she's a Raggedy Ann doll. And so unfortunately, a lot of people Annabelle. seem to forget that. They, when they, a lot of people nowadays, when they see or they hear Annabelle, they think of that horrible, disgusting-looking porcelain thing. And yeah, when you know I think why? Of because that, ventriloquist dolls were um, the thing. For most of those, you know. I remember the ventriloquist doll from Goosebumps. La, la, la. Ugh, that thing was creepy. Dolls are creepy. Well, it's 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 how they how the eyes are portrayed. They're really big and you know bug like and shit. <laughs> but I mean, they are. They're so <clears throat> creepy. Okay, you see one of those things sitting in the fucking dark, and then all of a sudden you turn it on, the eyes are just staring back at you, like right into your soul. <laughs> You know what's even creepier than just regular dolls? Clown dolls. Well, what about clown beds? I don't like clowns, can't, period. You can't sleep. Clown will leave me. <laughs> I don't like clown beds. But no, no, no. They're terrifying. Mm. Well, it says we're already talking about her. I guess we should pull the little girl up. And there she is in all of her glory, where she sits today. Do not touch anything. Good advice. <laughs> do not touch. Positively do not touch. So with this moppy little red hair and a stitch on half smile, bright triangle, orange nose. she You look at a Raggedy Ann doll and it invokes childhood memories. But this one now sits behind a glass. With the Lord's Prayer carved into it and a sign reading, warning, positively, do not open. Don't. And this girl right here is the true Annabelle doll. She happens to be a Raggedy Ann doll. But in all honesty, you really shouldn't let her appearance fool you. Annabelle, according to well-known demonologist Edna Lorraine Warren, is responsible for... Two near-death experience, one fatal accident, and a string of demonic activities that lasted for over 30 years. Her first known case of haunting actually happened back in 1970. She was a gift to a young woman from her mother for her 28th birthday. And the girl absolutely loved it. And she took the doll home, where she also had another female living with her, her roommate. Um, before too long... The two women actually began to notice that Annabelle seemed to move around the room on her own. Um, and then they started finding parchment paper that they didn't own with little notes reading, help me. 
one day, one of the roommate's boyfriend actually came over and he was laying over on the couch and he started hearing noises of like a bunch of rustling stuff, like someone had broken into the house and he went to investigate and all of a sudden he got this searing pain in his chest and when he looked down, he saw the three, if, if you know anything about demonic um, hauntings, they like there's always like this number of three which is supposed to be the variable of the trinity so they, they'll always leave like the three claw marks and he found the three bloody claw marks on his chest which eventually vanished after like two days but after this incident these two ladies reached out to a medium who happened to come over to the house and the medium told them that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a seven-year-old little girl named annabelle higgins whose body was actually found on the site of where their apartment was built so the girls felt really bad and so they wanted to give the little girl sympathy so they just they told her that she could stay and that's where all of their problems, according to Ed and Lorraine Warren, truly started for these two girls. Because they allowed it to stay, it was able to use that against them. According to the Warrens, spirits don't possess inanimate objects like houses or toys. They, want, they possess people. An inhuman spirit, on, it, on the other hand, can actually attach itself to a place or an object. And this is actually what occurred in the Annabelle case. The spirit manipulated the doll and created the illusion of it being alive in order to get recognition and to get sympathy and to get people to attach to it when all it was actually looking for was to be able to drain them to the point to where it would actually be able to attach itself to one of the two women to become its human host. Um... At once the Warrens got in there, saw what was happening, and figured out what was going on, they actually ordered an exorcism of the apartment, and they took Annabelle away with them. On their way home, they decided to take back roads, but on their way home, the brakes kept either stalling or failing or wouldn't work, so Ed had to eventually pull over and douse the doll with holy water in order to be able to make it home safely. Now, once they got home, they still didn't have this box that you see on the picture here. So he just ended up putting it in a room and they would find the doll levitating and moving around the house. So they actually had this tailor made, this box that you see her in. They had this actually tailor made for her. They inscribed both the Lord and St. Michael's prayer onto it and Every day until the day Ed Warren passed away, he would actually use a binding prayer over the case to keep the demonic spirit trapped. And you would think that that would be the end of Annabelle's story, but it's not. Even after this, and once she was with Ed and Lorraine Warren in their museum, which unfortunately now is closed after their passing, so you can no longer go to the museum to see the doll. Back when there was able to have visitations, there's one time that a priest actually came over to the house. Um, and he actually was able to pick up the Annabelle doll and he started mocking her and discounting her abilities. Ed told him not to do that, but he did it anyway. And when he left his brand new car, he ended up crashing it, saying that he saw Annabelle in his rearview mirror and barely made out of the car crash alive. The other instance that's well known is about a year after that incident, a young man and his girlfriend went to the museum and he kept tapping on the glass, laughing at her, going, do something, do something. You're fake. You're fake. You're not real. You're not real. And on his way home, he lost control of his motorcycle, crashing it into a tree. Unfortunately, he did not survive, and his girlfriend barely survived. So, the moral of the story here is, don't be an asshole. Yeah, don't be an asshole, and, um... <clears throat> let, let's put it this way. When it comes to... I honestly do believe in spirits, ghosts, demonic possessions, cursed objects. I believe in these things. And whether you think it's to be true or not, think of it as when you mess with something like this, it's kind of like playing Russian roulette. There may only be one bullet, but do you want that bullet to actually go off against you? Sure. Let's see what happens. You would.
Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -mm. I, I don't I don't like messing with things like that. Besides, I feel like I'm being offered a challenge. <laughs> besides the Raggedy Ann, I'll be honest, Raggedy Ann actually kind of freaked me out as a kid anyway. I didn't like the cartoon, and the doll was always creepy looking in my opinion. I mean, look at those eyes. Yeah, ventriloquist doll would have made it worse. That's the, um, <laughs> things, the reason why they went with that in the films. <laughs> well, they always glorify things when they take it from real life mm -hmm. to film. And one moment, please. Oh, Hi. Puppy. Are you a cursed object? Are you cursed? Are you a demonic spirit? You want peanut? No. Why? Why? Why are we up on my table now? Because you put her close to the table so she can get there. Hi. <laughs> Oh, I know what you're, but I, I'm not redeeming it. You better ask somebody. You need. I see you looking at it. Okay, fine. I will do it. Where is it? There you go. I redeemed for you. I redeemed it for you. I like how you think that this is acceptable for uh, every podcast. You know, I was just about to do that, and then it put a cool down for 14 minutes. Well, you could do it in 14 minutes. <laughs> you could do it in 14 minutes. I suppose so. But like I said, Annabelle's probably one of the most famous out of all of these because she's very well known thanks to the movie franchise that she has. But in my opinion, she's not the most dangerous of dolls that we have on this list. There is a doll that's going to be coming up later who I think Chucky. is way more dangerous. They actually call him the original Chucky. I was joking, but you know, we can, we can do that too. <laughs> he's actually called a real, he's called the real life Chucky. So, uh, yeah, that's always fun and exciting. Um, like a knife in the back, yes. <laughs> now, fully down the elevator shaft. The next one actually has a very tragic story if you're a hopeless romantic like me. So, it's not filled with douchebags tapping on the clouds. No, it's not full, filled with douchebags ta tapping on the glass, but it does It does have to deal with a father who thinks that his daughter shouldn't have married somebody because they were beneath her in status. Okay. And it revolves around this wedding dress here. Oh, Julie. Um, this is Anna Baker's wedding dress, um, which is actually displayed at the Baker's Mansion in Pennsylvania. Now, most of us, um, a, gr a, girls a lot, do envision at some point their wedding day. I've done it. Hell, I'm 42 and sometimes I still do it, hoping maybe someday it will happen. Envisioning the white dress and wanting to look like a princess. Um, a lot of us consider our wedding day to be one of the most important moments of our life, um, which I kind of personally agree. It is a moment when you look at someone else and go, you are so important to me that I can't spend the rest of my life without you. I am giving you part of me to you to spend the rest of my life with you. And I want you to be with by my side until the day I die. And to me, that is a commitment and a very important moment. And trust me, I'm the same type of person. I, I know the music I want played for my wedding. I know what kind of wedding dress I want. I know what I want my hair to look like. Um, I kind of know, um, I kind of want to make my husband to be if it ever happens. I've already picked out his outfit. I've picked out the bridesmaid stuff. I figured out how I think I've planned out. I've been planning my wedding since I was like 12. 
I have it down to a T. It'll go without a hitch. It's going to be nice. But a wedding dress, especially back in the olden days where, you know, there were still arranged marriages. Women didn't really get to choose a lot of times who they wanted to marry. Um, and the wedding dress was a huge symbol. Um, unfortunately for Anna Baker, this dress is what still keeps her here, plus her broken heart. Anna had a father who actually worked in a, who owned a factory, and she happened to have fallen in love with actually one of her father's employees, which her father absolutely objected to. Even though behind her father's back they had an affair, unfortunately it was short-lived and kind of ends on a tragic note. Um, Anna's father made her give up the only man she had ever wanted to marry, the only person she ever truly loved. And this law stayed with her even after her passing. Due to the fact that her father would not let her marry the man that she wanted to marry, she vowed to never get married unless she could marry this man. When her father passed away, she became excited because that meant for her, they could finally be together. Unfortunately, when she went to go find him, he had moved on, settled down, married, and had kids. For her, this sent her off the deep end. She became bitter, angry, sad. And actually, shortly thereafter, uh, she was actually declared insane due to the erratic behavior that she was showing. Um, people with uh, her maids would come into the house and find her dancing in the wedding gown that she had made to marry this man, dancing in the music hall with her music box, which was the music that she wanted to play at her wedding. After her passing, um, the Baker Mansion stood there for a while, but in 1941, it was actually open to the public as a historical museum. Many claim to actually see Anna herself dancing in the room or the glass case where her wedding dress is, is uh, when it's actually put away, shakes violently like someone's desperately trying to get into the case to get to the wedding dress. When it's on display, people say, claim that they actually see the dress itself move like Anna's in it and they hear the music box playing as the dress dances around the hall or in her own room. And to me, that's just kind of sad that even after she has passed away, she remains here. Because she was so devoted to this one person and her father denied her the happiness that she wanted most in this world. Hmm. By the way, I'm not saying that you have to get married. That's not, you don't have to. I know many people who don't get married. I know people who are together with their significant other and they're not married. But I also still understand for a lot, a lot of people, weddings are still important. The dress is cute. That's not the type of dress I would wear. You got, you no, 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 you don't get another one. No, no. Well, I mean, considering the dancing, um, I can see where that would have been an interesting choice. <laughs> but. I, it's kind of just you, it's just really sad. You know. <clears throat> kind of makes me wonder you mentioned the music box and then I think Phasmophobia's <laughs> music box. I wonder if they took that for that. You know, it it really wouldn't references. <laughs> it, you know, I'm sure a lot of the stuff was, you know, cuz a lot of, a lot of times when you think of horror movies, you do think of Ouija boards or uh dolls being possessed um you know, let's. You are <clears throat> shedding so bad that there's fur flying in my house. Um, yep, but I, in, in a lot of in a lot of horror movies, I've seen the music box, I've seen the possessed dolls, the haunted mirrors, um, Ouija boards, which are dangerous. People, they really are dangerous. Um, yep. 
So I, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, they heard some of these stories and decided to do that, you know, yeah. to put it into the game. It's either that or I think it was Lilium, the opening theme for uh, Elephant Line. Mm -hmm. Probably. That's the only other one I can think of because they use a the music box in that too. <laughs> Seems appropriate considering when we're playing the game, you can always hear that la 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 in the background. Mm -hmm. Be fully moody. But hands on around the throat action. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the next one, we're actually going to your part of the world. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned this, considering I've never heard of anything surrounding this. Really? That is it's quite interesting, good. then. So the next place we're going is, I know it says Ayers Rock. I don't know why, because they fin they finally changed it back to its original name. Uh, well, Uluru. actually, it's, it's considered both, but, you know, it's just, you, you have the, uh, the, the native's name for it is Uluru, and well, I did find it We're funny because I, th I think I think I think I had to. I did research on this particular one for like three hours, and I found so seriously, guys. You want you want you want to learn about something? Really, go take a look at this one because there's a lot of history with this particular landmark. Not just, and I'm not and I'm not and I'm not just talking about the cursed aspect of it. I'm just talking about the actual history and the significance of this. Well, I'm considering every time I see this, I think of that you know particular glacier section of um, Antarctica where the alien spaceship crashed in the thing. Kind of, I reckon it fit inside that. Man. <laughs> and one of the things, a lot of people were really upset because you used to be able to climb this rock. And they finally uh, made it to where you couldn't anymore. And after reading the history and the spiritual significance that this has um, for their for the people that live there, mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm really glad that they did. It finding out that even the simplest thing like taking a picture in a certain place on um, at Uluru could actually disturb the spirits and actually can harm some of their uh, beliefs. Y'all just keep people about 50 feet away. They, they could get a picture like this. That'll be good enough. I'm trying to remember if they still use this thing as a tourist attraction, but I don't believe it can be possible if they're not allowed to climb it anymore. They're not allowed to climb it. They, have, they now have it to where you can walk up to it be able to take pictures of it and they're really working on making sure that the certain sections um like the dreaming area stays away from the um public and um i'll actually talk a little bit about the dreaming here so that's right people we're going to the land down under uh this is called uluru also known as Ayers rock um uluru it's its actual name Ayers rock was it got renamed for some white dude. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name, and I didn't. I didn't want to put it into the thing because I don't care. Because after learning the history of this, I will never call it Ayers Rock again unless I'm actually trying to educate people on it. Um, it will always be Uluru from now on. This is a massive sand sandstone monolith right in the heart of the Northern Territory's arid red center. Uluru is sacred to indigenous Australians and is thought to have uh, to have started forming around 550 million years ago. It is supposedly one of Australia's most recognizable natural landmarks and has been pop and has been a popular tourist destination since the late 1930s. But it also happens to be one of the most important indigenous sites in Australia. Now, where the curse comes in is that it's actually believed that if you take a rock from Uluru, you will be cursed. Um, many who have done so to have their keepsake uh, actually send it back, explaining all the bad luck they've experienced since removing the stone, stating that from breakups to sickness, uh, family members ending up in the hospital, car accidents, unexpected deaths, 
the normal stuff that you would see. Nothing would go right. Things would break. Um, and many people believe the reason is due to the fact that the land around Uluru is a sacred place for the, um, and I may mess this up, so help me, A-N-A-N-G-U. On a Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Private chat. You know, because I, re I really don't want to mess up their name. And I figured you could help with that. There, it's in the private chat. The Anagu. Yeah, it'd be the Anagu. Um, these people actually believe that this site is a rested place for ancient spirits, and it actually is, which actually gives it a very religious stature to them. So it's an, to them, there's not a curse. What it is is when you take the rock, you've angered the spirits, and so they're going to punish you for taking something that does not belong to you. And the only way for your punishment to stop is to return it, which I found out is actually a problem also because it has to, it, when you take the rock and then you send it back to them to put it away, if they can't put it exactly where you took it from, they can't put it back. Mm -hmm. So you've completely disturbed the area. It's the so problem. Stop <laughs> picking up people's rocks. Stop it. I'll come across um, like people who think that moon rocks or anything from you know, the walls another place. It's a rock. Significance <laughs> is what exactly? I think it's because there's su such a spiritual binding. Um, the, the, the natural landmark is actually thought to have been formed by ancestral beings during the dreaming. Um, during the dream time. Yeah. According to the local Aboriginal people, Uluru's numerous caves and fissures were all formed due to ancestral beings' actions in the dreaming. Um, ceremonies are held in these sacred caves still to this day. And the dreaming actually refers to the time when the land and the people were created by the ancestral spirits. They create the rivers, the hills, rocks, and more, forming everything in the natural world. And the ancestors also made particular sites to express to the Aboriginal people which places were to be sacred. And according to the, how do you pronounce it again? The Anagu? Anagu. Anagu. Um, their story on the Uluru formed, on how it formed was actually, um, it revolves around 10 ancestral beings. Each region of Uluru has been formed by different ancestral spirits. In the southern side of Uluru, the rock structures were due to the war between the venomous and the carpet snakes. The northwest side was created by Mala, the hair wallaby people. Another area is formed by the, ooh, <laughs> I don't know how. Um, uh, hey, you you know, I'm doing that. No, that is not what I just highlighted. You, bad you. Um, oh, man. Where is it? There it is. Uh, come here. Come here, come here. I don't know. I just, I, I have this feeling that if I don't... Oh. Okay. Um, did you carpel of Kunaya? I don't yeah. know. I don't. I don't know how to pronounce everything they have because some letters are silent as well. Well, um, we try. I, I fuel tried, and he did much better than I did. Uh, but this is the sand python who left her eggs a short distance away and was dancing across the rocks. Um, and see, I just, I don't, I don't want to butcher anything because I just, like I said, reading this stuff and seeing how sacred and important this landmark is to the Aboriginal people. Yeah. 
curse you if you take anything from this land. Again, I don't understand the purpose of taking a rock, but because <laughs> look, I was there. Look at the rock. You could take a photo. As long as that doesn't curse you as well. I suppose. No. Well, um, again, there are certain places like where the sacred areas are, where there are some of the cave writings, and you're not allowed to take pictures there. Um, there's a, it, there was actually a point where uh, Google Maps actually took a picture of the wrong part of Uluru, and they had to request them to take it down because yeah. it was – a spiritual place that they actually happen to have taken the picture of from and that's all the way from space so they didn't even know what they were doing um and like i said uh the the, the rangers who are working really hard um they they really are trying to make sure that people don't go to places that they're not supposed to be um they're keeping you know once upon a time they actually damaged this rock with drilling holes and putting in a chain so people could use that to walk up the hill and they finally removed it and they finally gave this area back to the aboriginal people so they now own it finally <clears throat> and on top of that studying this i learned that there were there's so many indigenous animals to th just around this rock in australia they don't live anywhere else in australia but right there so yeah, it's really important to keep this place safe, not just because you don't want to get cursed because you took something you shouldn't, but the value of this landmark to the people, to the land, and to the animals that live there is so important that if anything happened to this, it could be an ecological disaster. But yeah, fuel, if you go to visit us, that's it's in your homeland, don't take a rock. You'll have bad luck. I, and you only have the one car. You only have the one car. Don't 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 lose your one car for a rock. Yeah, I don't collect rocks, so I think I'll be fine. I, on the other hand, I do collect rocks because once upon a time I wanted to be a geologist. Well, if you get an orange-colored one, then uh, have fun. See what happens. <laughs> mm -mm. Now, don't it's get me wrong. Rock, right? no. I, especially now that I actually studied, I, like I went through three hours because I was just so enamored. Not only with, um, like finding the curse stuff was easy, but then I got into the actual lore, and I'm just, I was just absolutely fascinated. Like this is, this is now on my I another thing that I want to do if I ever get to go to Australia. What? I would, Chris Rock. No. I actually want to take a picture of this at <laughs> dawn, high noon, and dusk. Because I love the fact that this rock actually changes color throughout the day. From either an orange mm. glow to a red glow, depending on what time of day it is. Sandstone. So, yeah. With different light, it's going to do that. That's, um... Yeah, when you get the pink skies, for example, that happens quite often around here. Also, like, because it's out in that way as well, you can have a lot of dust in the atmosphere, so it's also going to change. Right. Um, space more light. Well, like like it says, it is. It's, it's called the red. They said something like it's called the red center. Yeah, it's um. As far as I'm aware, it's the uh, the same color as the dirt that's out there. It's very like an orangey red sort of color, kind of like the rock itself. And um, yeah, it's uh, kind of dead center, I suppose, in the country. It's all desert sort of dry shit out there, really. You get some of that grass that's down there as well, but it's dry as all fuck. I would just, like I would like, I like to be there. Like I said, I like to go there. Let's see, but, uh, probably about the the only comparison I could probably make to it is somewhere out in Africa, you know, like the um the, the barren areas. Mm -hmm. but that, I don't know what they would call that particular region, but yeah, something similar. So, in other words, a place you're going to get a lot of dirt bo boogers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. Everybody's experienced it. When you've been in an area where there's a lot of dust and stuff, but it gets in your nose and you're just like, ah, 
Uh, and when I worked at no. the zoo, we, because um, it was in Florida, so you didn't really have dirt. You had sand. We called them sand boogers. Yeah. I used to have to work around people who do break legs. So yeah, it's all about the dust. But no. Um, My boots but, break up again. Yeah. But gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. But don't take anything from it. Gorgeous. And it will kill you. <laughs> I, you know what? It hasn't killed anybody. It's just you get a series of really bad luck. And everybody claims that it stopped after they returned the rock. Hey, and you, know they, what, you know what also is gorgeous? It will kill you. Saltwater crocodile. <laughs> and venomous snakes. Yeah, and kangaroos. I, actually, there was an indigenous man, um, and he wrote he wrote a full story about when he took the rock from here, and his bad luck instantly started because his as he was leaving Uluru, um, three kangaroos came up and attacked his car. I was going to say, what he was he beaten to death by this kangaroo? <laughs> no, they just <laughs> one kangaroo. He said it was the strangest thing as he was driving. The kangaroo stopped in front of his car, so he had to stop. And two other kangaroos came, and they just started beating the shit out of his car. <laughs> the horror, <laughs> dude! Those things fucking hurt. I've been kicked by one. It um, hurts. It, they never said it didn't, but you know, it's funny to see people try to take one of them on. It's really it's hilarious. <laughs> It's, uh, let me guess, a lot of them are stupid Americans who do not realize how big and badass they are. Uh, yeah, there's that, but you also get a lot of idiots who go out there and hunt these fucking things. I don't know if they still do, but, you know, back in the day, and, you know, if you're on foot and you piss one off. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know the, um... Aboriginals, they do hunt them, but what's really cool is with them now having this land throughout all these years, they've never changed their way of life. Well, they no, stick with their traditions. There. Out there, there is nothing else, so that's what they stick to because it works. <laughs> and then I think it was something called like the black footed wallaby, cutest little fucking thing, and it lives yeah, there. They're, they're like, um. Smaller versions of a kangaroo, the wallabies. Mm -hmm. We'll call them kangaroo light, a bit like donkeys versus horses. Right. In a similar fashion. I would have much rather been kicked by a wallaby than a kangaroo. Man. I'll have to tell you. you know, <laughs> I'll have to tell you my kangaroo story one day that we got them at the zoo. <laughs> they won't jump over the fence. He jumped over the fence. Yeah. How big did you think these things were? So this next one that we're going to is actually over in England. Oh, and the um, yep. the thing. The spiders. What? The spiders. I forgot about the spiders. Uh, really? Fu <laughs> fuck off. You, England? <laughs> you should be careful where you sit. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is another one of those Fasmo references. <laughs> This is called the Dead Man Chair or Busby Stoop Chair. It is an allegedly haunted oak chair that was cursed by the murderer Thomas Busby before his hanging in 1702. It actually happened to be his favorite chair, and he used to do a bunch of counterfeit money um, and a bunch of other nefarious things. And there, he actually ended up murdering his father in all law, Daniel Auntie. Um, he supposedly strangled him, and then on, um, there's, there's two rumors that either A, um, he strangled him on his favorite chair, or he was, he asked to sit in his chair before he left. Um, the argument was actually about, um, Thomas's wife, auntie's daughter, Elizabeth. But the rumor says that on his way to the gallows in 1702, he asked to stop by the pub and put a curse on his chair, claiming that anyone who sat in it would be haunted and soon died. It remained in the pub for centuries, and people were dared to sit in it. During, like go ahead. 
guy was clearly strangled in that chair because a motherfucker took his spot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you don't sit in a man's chair, okay? That, that, that's his shit. Especially if it's a recliner. <laughs> okay. You, you put that ass groove there for a reason, okay? It's comfortable. Um, so during World War II, airmen from a nearby base made the pub a hot spot and the chair became a hot seat. And people noticed that every time one of them would sit in the chair, they never come back. Um, in 1967, two Royal Air Force pilots sat in it and while driving back, they crashed into a tree and died. A few years later, two bricklayers decided to try it. And that afternoon, the one who sat in it fell to his death. Supposedly, hmm. this cursed chair has killed every person who has ever sat in it, no matter what. You know, it kind of makes me wonder why people even keep these things around. I mean, it's like it's, it's a chair. What are you going to use it for? Or we're just going to, you know, sit it here as a problem. How do you know? There's it's a cursed? lot of people. Oh, find out. There's a lot of people who like collecting things like this. They find them fat. I mean, I find them fascinating. I just don't want them in my house. I don't want whatever is attached to it in my house. I don't want it anywhere near my house. I've had my own demonic I interaction. I don't ever want to have to live with that again. No, thank you. Oh, no. It'll be fine as long as you don't sit in it and the dog and the cat. My friends. Yeah, just bring everyone else over and be like, hey, take a seat. Like there's no. Idiots always live next door. <laughs> oh, they moved out finally. Yay! Yeah, no, but there's always going to be more. You know, invite them in. Here, have some lemonade. The seat. <laughs> um, sometimes the <laughs> sometimes the chair has its own sense of humor when killing these people, and sometimes it just straight up killed them. Um, a lot of other instances is a roofer who sat in it died after the roof he was working on collapsed. A cleaning woman actually stumbled and fell onto the chair while she was mopping, and then she was killed later by a brain tumor that just magically developed out of nowhere. Um, eventually, the pub owner was like, okay, we're going to move this down into the basement where no one will be able to sit in it again. Unfortunately, a delivery man ended up going into the basement. He sat in it. An hour later, he crashed his truck and died. And then after that, the landlord asked the local museum to take it to assure no one sat in it again. And so they ended up hanging the chair five feet from the ground. Hmm. And again... Just like Annabelle, you would think that this is the end of the chair. The chair could do no more harm. But what's interesting is even though now that this chair is safe from people, there's still new stories that still seem to come out about the chair's power. Uh, one local was told about a driver who had picked up an airman. The airman asked to go to the bathroom, so they stopped at the Busby Stoop Inn, which is where the chair was originally located. While waiting, the driver sat in the chair. When the airman did a return, the driver left without him. The angered airman had to make his way back to the base. When he got back, the airman grabbed a building brick and smashed the head of the driver, killing him. <laughs> um, <sighs> Poor bastard. Even the, uh, But it does seem that because the museum has made it nearly impossible to be able to sit in it, its killing days are over. The museum is still open and functioning with the chair in place as of December 2014, but I, I think it's still there. I think you can still go to the museum. It is said that for some time prior to the death, time varies in all cases. The person who sat in the chair experiences haunting experiences, including extreme itching, paranormal, hearing thieves, confusion, items being moved, written warnings on mirrors and walls about the person's immediate death in addition to many other strange happenings. Hold on. Hold on. So the first thing you mentioned there is extreme itching. So... <laughs> <sighs> All right, so basically everyone who dies is going to break out the fucking ranch. It's going to be interesting. Yes. Um, oh, I crashed my car. Why? I was scratching my ass. It was bad. But if, you, <laughs> but if you happen to go to England, check it out. It's at the Thirsk Museum. 
good idea. Everyone go over there and sit down, get photos, send them to us. We'd like that. <laughs> Any of those stories that come up afterwards, like, you know, extreme itching, brain tumors, whatever, I care. You can write them all in the chat. You, 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 you. Wow. So next, we're going to talk about another doll. And this one uh, inspired a movie franchise from the 80s. Oh. Oh, no. What could it be? The Child's Play. And the lucky person is Robert the Doll. Looks like a crash dummy made out of potatoes <laughs> or a potato sack. I don't know. Close enough. He, Robert, he said it, not me. Yeah, come on, Robert. Bring your shit. <laughs> See what you got. So, if you thought Annabelle was bad, wait till you meet Robert. The story of Robert the doll actually dates back all the way to the 1900s. When a young boy named Eugene, who um, who actually goes by the just the name Gene, so but his name was Eugene Robert Otto, was given a one of a kind handmade doll by a servant that worked for his parents in his home. He named uh, excuse me. He named the doll Robert and quickly became attached to his new friend. Now, where the home where Eugene lived, which is now called the Artist House. Um, I believe, uh, which they actually, that you can find the address. Um, it was like 534 Eaton Street. It was built between 1890 and 1898. It was here that Eugene was given Robert the doll and where the friendship that lasted throughout his lifetime and possibly even beyond was forged. While he seemed like an ordinary cloth doll, it wasn't long before Robert was involved in a strange and somewhat terrifying event. The first hint that something out of the ordinary was happening was one night when Jean, who at the time was only 10 years of age, awoke finding Robert the doll sitting at the end of his bed staring at him. I'm out. I'm gone if any doll ever comes to the foot of my bed. No. Well, we'll see what happens. Moments later, his mother was awakened by his screams as he was screaming for help, and she could hear the sounds of furniture being thrown throughout the room. Jean kept crying and begging his mother to rescue him. She, unfortunately, the door was locked from the inside, so she was unable to get to him until she was finally able to get the door unlocked, and she opened it. She saw Jean curled up in a fetal position on his bed, the room in complete shambles, and Robert the doll smiling at the foot of the bed. When she asked, that would have been awesome. When she asked Gene what happened, he said, "Robert did it." And they were the only words that Gene could say. And these ended up being words that he would later use many times throughout his childhood. Every time something strange, mysterious, or destructive would happen. <laughs> Well, I mean, the smile works, considering. Although, I'm going to shorten his name to Bob, because Bob is awesome. <laughs> um, obviously, this wasn't the only occurrence. Um, G's parents would often hear their son upstairs talking to the doll and getting a response back in a totally different voice. They reported seeing the doll speak and witnessing his expressions changing. Giggling and sightings of Robert running up the stairs or staring out the upstairs window. Robert lived with Jean throughout his entire lifetime. And after Jean's parents died, he moved back into their home with his wife, Anne. Jean decided that the doll needed a room of his own and placed him in the upstairs room that had a window overlooking the street. Yes, so he could see all the peasants down below that he could murder. Um, obviously, his wife, Anne, felt really uneasy with Robert in the house. And although she could have put a finger on it, she wanted Jean to lock the doll up in the attic where he could do no harm. Jean finally conceded and um, Robert was not very happy. 
Uh, soon, footsteps were starting to be heard in the attic. The sounds of someone pacing back and forth and devilish giggling. Um, the neighborhood children reported seeing Robert watching them from the window from the attic. Um, and the doll mocking them as they walked to school. Um, so, of course, Gene went upstairs knowing he was the reason that this was happening because he rock locked Robert in the attic. Um, but when he went upstairs, he actually opened the door to the bedroom and Robert got out of the attic and was sitting in the rocking chair that you see in the picture by the window. Gene would keep locking Robert back up in the attic and he would come back down to the bedroom, sitting by the window in the same upstairs bedroom, the one that Gene originally gave him. There is something here as well. What? You said the mother's name was Anne, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So later on, when she was you know, killed by Robert over here, she then in turn possessed the Raggedy Ann doll. <laughs> it, became, it became Annabelle. <laughs> okay, now now you're look look you're you're giving Hollywood too many ideas. Don't do that. Okay, so then we've got to have the epic doll struggle. <laughs> you know Hollywood would make that canon. Oh fuck! Who cares? It's an idea. It's stupid. Make a parody. Do it. <laughs> um, in 1974, Gene passed away, and um. New owners actually moved into the Eaton house, and their now 10-year-old daughter actually found right. Robert the doll. Um, she was absolutely delighted. That didn't last very long. Um, one night she awoke often, or actually, she awoke often in the middle of the night screaming in fear and told her parents that Robert had moved about in the room. So the the parents eventually gave Robert the doll away. To the East Martello Fort, where visitors from all over the world can see him even today. And this is in Key West. Robert the Doll actually, to this day, still continues to taunt and scare those who come to view him while he is in this place. Um, guests to the museum uh, who attend, uh, try to take photos, many report their cameras become inoperable, including the ones on their phones stop working if they're using their phones. When they try to take a picture of Robert and only begin working again when they leave the museum. Um, even though Robert the doll sits in a glass, a glass case, it doesn't seem to stop him from inflicting fear and discomfort to the museum staff and visitors. Many staff report Robert's facial expressions change, and you can still to this day hear his demonic giggling, and he likes to put his hands up on the glass. Hmm. Interesting, because Annabelle doesn't like anyone tapping the glass. Annabelle doesn't move. Perfect. Annabelle Perfect. hasn't moved Perfect. since they put her in that little container. That's not the point. She likes touching glass. She hates the touching glass. Perfect. Rivals. <laughs> Epic. Possessed. Dull. Struggle. Make it happen. I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I will be absolutely honest with you. If Robert the Doll went up against Annabelle, Robert the Doll, in my opinion, would totally win. Eh. Still think for a funny movie. <laughs> All right, Hollywood. You heard fuel. Get to it. It's shit about Hollywood. Okay, it's a lot of indie people out there that are probably doing. But yeah. So, what's funny for me is I actually knew about Robert the Doll long before I ever heard of the Annabelle story, and he mm. always creeped me out. I was gonna say, the look of this thing. Kind of reminds me of something that would survive the war. You know, like the first Their one. Their outfit, the puppy. I also love the fact that they're like, here, have your chair. Oh, yeah, I think this chair. is no longer this oh. is no longer the rocking chair that he liked, but they now give him a chair so he could just sit down and relax. Because I don't oh. see the rocky stuff, but yeah. Well, if, you kept, if you kept taking the other guy's chair, he'd probably be strangled or uh, cursed <laughs> with something. Remember, they never came back, but Robert always comes back. Yeah, Robert always comes back. Right. Duel with cursed objects. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so, whew, ah, no, 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 don't do that. Come on, stop being a butthead about this stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. So our next one is actually a painting. And what a painting it is. Yeah. So the English man is what this painting is called. Mm -hmm. Um, God, what is it got? Hold on. Do, 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 do. This is I. Um, this is supposed to be one of the world's most haunted paintings, and uh, Mr. Sean Rob Robinson, who actually owns the painting, says that it was given to him by his grandmother. The artist of the painting is unknown, but what they do know and what causes this painting to be haunted is the fact that the artist ended up putting his own blood into the paint. Um, why am I you? Because you didn't change your avatar, clearly. Why do I always become you? I don't want to be you. <sighs> Fine, you can be the anguish man. <laughs> um, but not only did he mix his own blood into the paint, but after he was done painting this, he committed suicide. What, is this some kind of ritual so you could live on in the painting? Um, I don't know, but, um, uh, it didn't save my stuff. Um, it isn't oil. This is, this, guys, this is why oil and blood, you shouldn't mix the two, because then you get shit like this. Um, he does, um, I mean, I guess you could crazy, say that it is him. I mean, yeah, I guess that's one way to say that you're going to live forever. Um, so, like I said, this is supposed to be one of the most haunted objects in the world, uh, right along the side of a Dybbuk box and Annabelle the doll. Which, again, I still say Robert's more terrifying than Annabelle ever will be. Um... The guy, but Sean Robinson from Cum Cum Cumbria, England. Um, he act, like he said, he inherited this from his grandmother, who actually warned him that the painting was cursed. Although Robert or uh, Robinson, Sean, yeah. mm -hmm. although Sean was fascinated with the painting, he kept it in the basement of his house because his wife did not like it. Yeah, well, it's too bad. I would have put it front and center in the TV. Now, unlike a lot of these other ones that started, you know, back in the day, this case actually becomes known since 2010. Okay. So there would be TVs. Sean, in 2010, due to flooding in the basement, actually had to move the painting from the basement, and he kept it in one of his bedrooms. The moment he put the painting upstairs and went into the bedrooms. His entire family experienced, started experiencing strange activities around the house, such as seeing a shadowy figure of a man and hearing sounds of whispering and crying. Robert, or I keep calling him Robert because I keep, because it, it said Robinson. Sean would actually wake up to see a dark faceless figure standing in his bedroom and his wife discovered a stranger lying on the bed next to her, leaving her traumatized. The incident that really put the family in danger is when the couple son Keenan felt a presence push him down the stairs. <laughs> in 2011, Robinson actually uploaded a video on YouTube titled Ghost Activity Caught on Tape. Haunted, haunted painting to anguish man. So if you want to go see it, you can go ahead and watch it. This gained over a million views. The video was recorded in one of his bedrooms for eight hours, uh, which he ends up condensing it down to nearly three minutes. It contains footage of the door closing on its own. Um, a loud bang and sounds of scraping can be heard in the video. And ever since then, Robinson, uh, Robinson, Sean, has actually been uploading more videos, posting updates about the painting, and capture further paranormal activity in the house, such as distorted sounds and a mysterious ghostly figure running past the camera. 
You know, it's kind of funny that this sort of thing isn't in Phasmophobia. I would have thought a haunted painting would have been awesome. You need to write those guys an email. <laughs> I mean, come on. You walk into a house and you see something like that? Fuck. I um, know something's wrong. <laughs> and of course, you know, now there's... And this story became so popular that the internet itself started its own thing called Creepy Pasta. Um, an urban legend posted um, on Reddit um, where a man named Michael finds the exact same painting in his basement, hangs it up in his bedroom. Um, the story's more graphic as Michael wakes up from sleep with his ear slit down the middle and walls of the house covered in horrifying messages written in blood. Um, but you could go watch the videos. You could decide whether or not you think it's real or fake. Um, to this day, Sean refuses to destroy the painting. He keeps it in his basement to avoid any more harm to his family. But rumor has it that this painting will also be coming to cinemas as he is talking about having the uh, having the acquired. Um, He's currently planning on bringing his story to the big screen, talking to people to make a film about the Anguish Man. As one should. I mean, look at As the one should, yeah. That's fucking funny. Most, yeah, because that's what we need. More cursed objects. Well, it's actually kind of funny because I remember something that looks almost similar to this in a movie back in, I think it was 1990. I'll have to find it later. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, and um, so that's going to bring us to our last one because we're starting to uh, go a little bit over. Look, it's just a statue, right? <laughs> what? I'm just touching it. Just kidding. What the fuck is that? The This is called Women from... L-E-M-B Lemb or Limpa okay. in Cyprus okay. Private chat Drop it in again I'll try to, just, <laughs> I'll try to decipher your language It's a bah! L E M B. It is Cyprus It's just Lemb Whatever <laughs> I thought it was a bit more confusing than that, but no, it's just lamb. <laughs> so, is silent. Archaeologists always find things from Egyptian tombs to beautiful objects, gold, jewels, yada, 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 yada. Um, and history always seems to have an... Uh, this allure to these things that cannot be ignored. And everybody seems to want to own a piece of the past. Unless it's a curse of death to the owner. Which is where the Women of Lem statue comes. In 1878, a small statue carved from pure limestone. By the way, let me, let me put this to you. Let, if you know anything about paranormal activity, limestone is a conductor. Of paranormal activity. So if there's limestone. And there's paranormal activity around there. The limestone could be feeding it. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like ghost hunting here in my hometown. Because the entire. Almost the entire underneath of where I live. Is limestone. That's why if you get a glass of water from the uh, faucet. And you let it sit overnight. Green. There will be a green film at the bottom of your glass. Huh. Sounds awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of limestone here underneath where I live. And it makes for there there's a little there's a little town about 10 minute drive from my place called Riley. Almost every business and home in that itty bitty little town has been reported as haunted. Not only, uh, including the fire department. In that little bitty town, there's seven Indian burial grounds 
and a sinkhole that just showed up out of nowhere that they've constantly tried to repair and it just opens back up a week after they repair it. So they just let it be and it just has a bunch of caution tape now around it. <laughs> and there's an old church um, from back in our, the, the church actually um, has Daniel Boone's carvings in it. And the gravestones are so old that you can't even see the dates on them. Okay. So yeah, now you have a statue carved from pure limestone. That's a cursed object. That doesn't surprise me at all. No, it wouldn't. Um. Anyway, this was on Lift and Lem, Cyprus. It was dated around 3500 BC during the early to middle Catholic period. And at the time when the island inhabitants were known as Cyprus. In addition to national limestone deposits, large copper deposits propelled the island to a position of economic strength in the period leading up to the Bronze Age. The women from Lem statue is similar to hundreds of other cruciformed or cross-shaped type statues from the same period, but it's not exactly the same. There is a consensus more. Uh, there's uh, there is a consensus since more than one hundred statues have been found. Some being more detailed than others. Smaller ones than the one that you see here in the picture. Actually, you can actually. Uh, no, I got the full picture, so you can actually see some of the smaller ones have actually been recovered from burial sites, while the larger ones are thought to have ceremonial significance. Mm. Now, what's interesting is there's no archaeological records of an exava excavation or actual discovery of this particular statue. All accounts state that it was discovered in 1878, but there are no details, including the name of the founder. At the time, it was considered to be either a fertility statue or a crude de de depiction of the goddess whose name has been lost to time. The lack of detail on the surface of the piece makes it challenging to correlate with other works. Regardless of the origin, the statue has a dark reputation and actually sometime actually earned the nickname Goddess of Death due to so many fatalities connected with it, with those who have either owned or touched it. Four families had possession of this. All lost members connected to the Women of Lem statue. And Chronologically, the tale follows as this. Lord Iflot from the first was the first owner during the time of Cyprus was a British colony. Within six years of buying the statue, he and seven members of his family passed away. After that, Ivor, Ivor, Men, Men, Ivor I'm not even trying to pronounce the name. It's spelled M-E-N-U-C-C-I. He obtained a statue in Europe and had a similar experience, but his entire family died within four years. The third owner, Lord Thompson Knoll, his family also perished, entire family, within four years. <coughs> the statue eventually ended up as the property, and shortly after acquiring it, ended up as the property of, doesn't say, um... Oh, the statue eventually ended up to a, another member of his family that was not part of his, like, it was like his aunt or something like that. Um, and when she got it, her two daughters died. And then so the two sons actually donated the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh. The museum curator who handled the statue died within a year. And so now the statue is currently in glass, is in a glass case in the museum and is not allowed to be touched by human hands. Damn. <laughs> However, can we still write on it? No. Sit not by hands. You could use a pen. Uh, maybe get, get one of those little, you know, those ink pens. Paintbrush, maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> I wouldn't go anywhere near this son of a bitch. Death seems kind of to follow like this. Ball. Death follows this primitive piece of shit no matter where it goes. And this thing is so actually feared, it is kept in a fully enclosed glass case. 
It is considered cursed even to this day that you are not allowed to touch it without wearing gloves. No human contact whatsoever. See? Not allowed to touch it without gloves, which means you could get it with a fucking... I'm not Some touching sort of it at all. If they put, if I worked in that museum and they're like, okay, you got to go clean that display, I'll be like, I quit. Bye. That's fine. I'm out. Just fill it with weed and take out. <laughs> Let's just say the number of fatalities <laughs> seem to overrule any attempt to rationalize or debunk this tale. And there's very, there's something very sinister with these particular statues. And now that they're housed and locked up, there's really yeah. no way of telling if or when it will actually reveal itself. But it's quite terrifying. And I want nothing to do with it. I'll send it to Ords. See if he'll use it. <laughs> he probably would. Fill it with weed and turk out. Oh my god, no, don't do that. Please don't do that. But <laughs> that is actually the last of our cursed objects for the day. Um, I know this is a slightly shorter one, but uh, we have another event coming in like an hour, like two hours. So actually less than two hours. Well, but there are it has given me an idea for something. There are so many considered objects out there from screaming skulls to music boxes, the divot box, um, the hope diamond, the what is it called? It's actually it's actually the centerpiece on the crown of the crown jewels. What is that no diamond idea. called? <laughs> the Koei Nor Diamond. Um, there's other paintings, mirrors, full fledged freaking mansions themselves. And I think it's because of things like this that not only having my own experiences um, with the paranormal but so many different types of paranormal things that are out there, it's really hard for me not to believe in it. Maybe the reason why I get goosebumps so many times when I play Phasmophobia, because it's like, Ugh, I've experienced things like this before I went out. Or a random spider dropped on you. Last time a spider dropped on me, I bailed out of my car going 35 miles an hour and let my car wreck. They were talking about a game, but okay. Oh, well, yeah. Huh? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, well, let's just, you know, escalate that, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> but guys, um, I hope that you found some of this interesting. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, Maybe you learned something new. Maybe you're going to go check out those Anguish uh, painting videos over on YouTube. Um. Maybe you believe in it, maybe you don't. But I on honestly, if you want to learn more about some of this stuff, Google search it, especially Uluru. That like that was the one I had the most fun learning about. Seriously, I'm just I am so in I I oh, I am so enamored with Uluru now. It's going to be like my new obsession. How do you folks? She likes big rocks. She cannot lie. I, as a, as a person who learned a lot about my Native American heritage and reading some of the stuff that the aboriginals and the, what that particular area means to them and knowing the significance of that and knowing how within my culture, uh, my history of my ancestors and certain lands and spirits and things, it's just... It's just one of the things that I kind of connect with it and I understand. <laughs> and I just hope that now that people can't walk on it, um, the aboriginals are actually able to maintain their spirits and their way of life and that 
they're able to keep those sacred places sacred because to me that's it's extremely important to be able to preserve things like that because here in america we destroyed everything we came over. Boring. We beat the we beat the shit out of this land. Yeah, the land maybe, but you're still holding on to coast dolls and chairs and all the weird shit. Um, the chair is in England. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you put your own chairs somewhere. He's got probably. Find Look what I found in the attic. Yeah. Okay. But actually, you know, it brings you to the thing. You know, you see that that movie. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, where literally the only reason each character is speaking is because they're cursed objects. Uh huh. There you go. <coughs> they were all once human. They all died. Their blood splattered all over the walls and the cabinets and the chairs and the chandeliers, candelabras. They came to life and murdered everyone inside. That would have been a better version. <laughs> uh, yeah. And screw the main characters because now they are. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Then we but turn no. it into a scoop new episode. <laughs> but seriously, um, I hope that you guys found any of these things as fascinating as I did. Um, as you could tell, Fuel was completely enamored with this. I'm not the one with the rock fetish, okay? <laughs> it's not a rock fetish. It's the history and the God. spiritual signific God. significance God. of it. God. Just stop. Like, I would love to go there and be able to actually just be in, just be there and feel the energy from it. And all the dust. Honey, I worked at a zoo for 15 years. Dust doesn't bother me. Yeah, I'm not into sure Skywalker. Not a zoo when it comes to dust, okay? <laughs> well, I used to, the barn area, like I said, ugh. You would get home. I would get home and I would turn a different color as all the dirt and the sand and the dust would wash off of my body after eight to ten hours and that's shit. But that's a tale for another time, kids. <laughs> in which it is a tale for another time. Because unfortunately, we have to go. But of course, as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, if you're watching over on my channel, make sure that you go over and check out Fuel the Hatred. He, he's right here on Twitch as well, doing the dual stream with me. He's also over on TikTok, and you can find him on Twitter at Fuel Hatred. And if you want some more AGP, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, and of course, YouTube. We thank everybody for watching. We hope that you enjoyed it and we'll see you all on the next one say goodbye i really shouldn't because it'll probably come back to haunt me oh dear lord not that that would be bad it's kind of funny but i'm not gonna do it it's too bothersome bye guys <laughs>